Hello again. The two composers who dominated the contemporary music scene when I was young were Schoenberg and Stravinsky. Schoenberg had started as a romantic composer, a late romantic composer, following on from Wagner's last works. Verklärte Nacht Gure Lieder are very much in the uh, Tristan and the Mahler tradition. Uh, he then went through a period of revolution uh, where he experimented with uh, atonality and above all invented this 12 note technique which so dominated the music of the 20th century. I'll come back to that. And then there was a period of reconciliation where he somehow combined all of these elements and um, that doesn't tend to get talked about as much. Very interesting works in this time as well. The composers, the three composers who really took on from his work were Berg, Webern and Eisler, particularly concentrating on the 12 note technique. Stravinsky, uh, again, a very important person for uh, experimentation. He always was trying new ideas, experimented also with 12 note technique, but above all, the elements that you'll always find in his work are uh, folk dance, as we find with Bartok, irregular rhythm and bird song, as we find with Messian, and sort of ostinato that Janacek was so fond of as well, but even for Janacek it wasn't new. We find this with Beethoven too. <laughs> repetition of the same sort of element. So if we say that these elements of atonality and serial were so important, let's have a closer look at the technique of serial composition and how this works. Now the first thing you need is a note row, which is all 12 of the semitones in any order you care to put them. This is the order I've chosen for mine. So I have all of the 12 notes there, and they don't seem to have any order or logic whatsoever. So now I invert this row. I simply take the first note, a D again, and then instead of going up an augmented fourth, well, I come down. It happens to be the same note. But now instead of going down a major second, as I did originally, I go up a major second. And here, as usual, we're talking about A-sharp and B-flat as being the same note. So this then is my inversion, going on the same principle. Well, now I start with the last note and play the thing literally backwards. And now I can take that and again turn it upside down and I get this. So there I have the four basic versions of my note row. Now, I can transpose this onto any of the positions of the 12 positions of the scale, and that gives me 48 versions in all together of this, just this simple row. So what I've done with this now is to show an example of how to use this. This is Baba Black Sheep, but put into a rather dark setting with its 12 note setting.
you don't have to do as I've done now, just sticking to one bar with one. This is only to demonstrate the technique. But uh, again, this seems a very simple way of going about music making. And I don't recommend it to anybody who hasn't already composed music in a normal tonal manner, as Schoenberg himself did and always insisted on his pupils being able to do. But if you can do all of these techniques, it's just one more string to your bow. Trying to write a style of music that didn't just copy what other composers were doing at the end of the 19th century, led composers to experiment with completely atonal, I mean, the key pieces that do not have a key at all, serial compositions that use the 12 notes in a structure, in a very, very strict structure. Messian created his own modes and tried to compose inside these. Hindemith also had his own system. And we find then, uh, as the century developed, some very interesting people going back sometimes to look at what I call cultural crossover, first of all. Debussy took elements from Bali particularly, Messiaen from India, and it was people like Philip Glass taking elements from Indian composers again, and Steve Risch, who was working from uh, Africa and Bali elements, they created something that is now called minimal music. Again, a tremendous opportunity for people to working in that who want to work in that direction. And another type of cultural crossover is people who looked back to the Renaissance, the late medieval and early Renaissance period. People like Avo Pert and Morton Larrison creating a, um, a, a musical language that sounds curiously simple to our ears, particularly by comparison with some of the complexities of their, their contemporaries. Peter Michael Hamel was also very much influenced by India, but his, probably his major contribution was working from the classical tradition towards pop, rock and jazz, looking at a crossover in that direction. And somebody who worked from the other direction was Chick Corea. Chick Corea had started as a classical pianist. He was trained as a classical pianist and then became, of course, one of the most famous jazz pianists of our time. This series of children's songs, like Bartok's Microcosmos, takes people from quite an early stage, not really the complete beginner, but quite an early stage of the piano, and progressively takes them on to slightly more ambitious projects. Its value for us now, of course, is to see just one of the elements of crossover between jazz, rock, pop, and the classical tradition. Now, another of the ways that you can experiment with uh, different styles of composition is simply using different scales, which has also been very popular with jazz composers and jazz improvisers. Now, we know about the major and minor scales, we know about the church modes, and we know about some of the other scales, but there are several hundred scales actually available to us, and it's a pity to limit ourselves just to the things that we've just been handed down. So please do feel free to experiment with some of these. So uh, this, in one source at least, will be called the diminished half tone scale. And the diminished whole tone scale. Now just play the scales, it's really quite difficult uh, just to tell the difference just straight off. But if you find these, experiment with them, you'll be surprised what can come out of them. Here's the Lydian minor scale. And the Lydian diminished. We already talked about this chord. Built up of the two diminished seventh chords from C sharp and from C and this gives us tremendous opportunity for the so-called alpha chord, also the scale, the octatonic scale, which was Messian's second mode, and of course this famous scrunchy chord from the right of spring to remember from the dance of the adolescence is of course nothing other than a diminished chord with just one note taken from the next diminished chord added to that making it a so-called beta chord
it. Now you should have no difficulty finding lots of different scales and if there is any problem, please feel free to write to me, I can let you have material. Now, the next two elements that we must discuss, the first of all the electronic music, you'll find with composers like Karlheinz Stockhausen. Um, this was very important around the 60s, 70s, 80s. Gone out of fashion slightly at the moment, but there are still elements that we can take from this new ideas for our own work. And then a composer whose work has certainly dominated the second half of the century is John Cage, with his aleatoric compositions, works based on a certain chance element. He even went as far as using the I Ching for composing music, and we find uh, composers using game elements and so on that can be just to take us away from the idea of a, of a ready-made structure. Now, with this little piece, I wrote for, um, for a Beethoven celebration for a music school. Now, I had eight young girls who were between 10 and 16, eight piano pupils who were involved with this project. And I simply had them on two pianos, one lined like this, obviously, and the other just parallel behind it. And the idea was that each of the girls started playing one particular figure down here, moved up the piano, the next girl would start, and so at one point there would be four people on one piano, and then they'd move around to the other piano, so that ultimately there were eight people playing, and they would constantly be in motion. So I called this a Beethoven Reigen. Now the figures they were playing were all taken from the Beethoven, uh, the second movement of the Beethoven Eighth Symphony. So it started with the metronome ticking away at 88, tick, 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 tick. And then the first player played any triad at all, four times, and then moved up the piano, and so on. The next player came in playing, again, just going up the triad, this is another element from the same piece, and then the third player would come and then, again, moving all the way up, and the fourth player, so on, and all the way up the piano as they join in, and then comes the fifth player, the sixth player would do this, again they will move up, and then the last one, and this is the last one, is the seventh, sorry. in destroying everything and then when she gets to the middle and then on a sign this will go on for a couple of minutes they would go around just doing this dance the music that comes out of this is of course all based on Beethoven it's not going to sound like Beethoven it's all going to be in very very different keys and the at a sign from one of the players they all then end the piece with now this might give you a few ideas for an aleatoric composition. If you want to know just where the limits are, how far you can go, well, I think John Cage set this with his composition 4 minutes 33, 4.33. And um, this requires the pianist simply to look as if he or she is ready to start performing and then actually never play a note. The piece is, play, is divided into four movements and the uh, the same is required for each movement. We just sit, ready to play, and the music, as Cage described it, uh, the music consists of the noises that come out of the audience, noises perhaps of impatience, coughing, the normal sort of shuffling around that you get in concerts. And, um, and this is already the music itself. The point being, of course, the music is with the listener not just with the performer. The music isn't just something that's written down. It's always, even if it's written down, it's always something that's created in a certain moment and is absolutely dependent on the person listening to it. So these are the five elements I'd like you to experiment with and explore. Once again, the atonal and serial method, 12-tone method. Cultural crossover, looking at music from other countries, music outside your own sphere, either from time or place. And then 
other styles of music. If you're a pop musician, well, look at jazz and rock, look at uh, the classical tradition and so on, just to see where you can get new ideas. Electronic music will open lots of doors as well for you, and the finally the aleatoric or music based on the principle of chance can give you tremendous opportunities. Finally, please do experiment as we did with La Folia, just squeezing melodies into different scales. You'd be surprised what will come out of it. That's all for now.